Hi. How's Comic Con? Wow. <laughs> Is this your first con? Third. 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 Okay. Third. 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 So, how was your, how did you rate your overall, overall experience your first season of like this experience? Great. Great. Um, I'm really mad at what I anticipated thinking about it. The only thing that really matters is the results. And uh, I guess that's why we're here again, because we had pretty good results. My, my dad wanted me to tell you that he thinks you're one of the funniest men ever. <laughs> and he doesn't laugh at anybody, really. And he, he didn't used to like you, you know, back when you first started. But you made it turn around. And, and what do you think does that to people? I mean, like, your comedy, how do you, how do you think it, it just hits people and makes everybody laugh? I don't know, it's, uh, that's what I'm, if I could keep to say, that's just what I'm born to do. I'm born to entertain people, you know, either fighting, or you know, what I'm doing now. Do either, you know, like I was saying before, I could do it with like 30,000 people or three people. That's just what I'm not, I'm not to entertain people. No, I know, uh, like, the, the fight game has a little bit of a comedy to it sometimes, because well, you're trying to get into your opponent's head. You know, you're trying to get jump in there. Did you learn anything from showmanship when you were fighting that you could take know, I used to know, um, this is what I learned as a kid. Everybody had their own, um, I used to know my objective is when I'm finished, whatever I'm doing in front of a, um, an audience of people, my objective, my sole objective only is for me to have them say, when's the next time I can see him? And that's just, that's just, I work with my barometer and what I do. Yeah, well, I'm certainly in that group. I love, I love watching yourself did back in the day, too. And you've got me laughing about cheese frittata now. I have no idea why. <laughs> I just always, every time I hear cheese frittata, I hear you say cheese frittata. Cheese frittata. <laughs> when Warner Brothers first approached you, did you sit down any... I said no. I said I don't want to do it. I said no. Really? I said no. So how did they convince you? And then did um, you give them a He answer? said no too. He gave it to me. Both said no, this is not gonna work. Um, I guess that's why they're the suits at Warner Brothers and that's why we're the working <laughs> stiff, because they know what's gonna work and we don't. But did you give them any rules like say I'll I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to do anything. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and now I didn't want to do it. And then um Eventually, Stu, I thought it was like, you know, like I was saying earlier, it was like, um, you know, the first Edison photo movie, click, 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 you know, you take the page, I thought it was going to be like that, and then when I saw it the first draft, it was pretty much um, up to date, very sophisticated, and I said, yeah, I want to, I want to try to do this and make it look good, and then it, it literally looked good, it made it look good. What is this? Um, I'm asking why I'm doing my voice. I'm just, no, no. <laughs> Do you have a favorite cartoon? Hey, Mike, um, can you tell us about some of the cartoons maybe that like you grew up with that kind of influence how you're performing now? I'm going to send you cartoons from the um, 70s. Um, you know, um, Deputy Dogs, um, Looney Tunes, Heckle and Jackal. Superman, Super Friend, all that stuff. Um, Huckleberry Hound, these guys, Scooby, all the hot about Barry stuff, pretty much. So, how surreal has it been for you to watch the fan base grow for this, especially at conventions? Because I just find that they're more and more excited, like, especially now with the new season. I don't know, I don't question my life. <laughs> so, I say, well, this is working. It's not that well done. This is rare, I've never thought I'd be in this particular genre, but this is working, so if it's working, it should hang out here for a while. My coach is out there, and, you know, I'm going to ask you, which do you prefer? Which do you kind of get into a completely different character when you're doing both? I like live performances. I like being loud in front of a crowd of people. What gave you the impression of being here? I saw Chad Palmetto do a Bronx Tale in Vegas. Yeah, I said, I want to do that. So, I, do you 
still race pigeons? Yeah. You do still race yeah, pigeons. Yeah, that's something I, I'm going to do. When you're a pigeon fan, you do it to the guy. When I die, somebody's going to be coming to I've already been, so I'm here to pick up my bird. That's what's happening all the pigeon fans. Yeah, so I wonder what it's like working with more playing a I've never worked with no man. It's yeah. faded up. I've never saw no I don't know what no one right. looks like. I know we had a big fan base today, but you know, Coaches me in the streets and tell me the great kids and how I work to work with them. I've never shown Norm. I've never spoken with Norm. I always think I was stayed in early. I thought Jim had fashion um, Norm and the uh, Mark of Queensberry. But I realized that I was mistaken when he's not Norm. And he and Norm have never been encountered with Norm. Is that ever a challenge without having, you know, you're in the booth and you're recording everything, you don't have those people to feed off of? I want every challenge to like I want, I want to be able to be uh, up against a situation that if I feel up, I risk the chance of being humiliated. Only by that, um, only by that kind of, um, adversity that I would, you know, rather be above my level of performance. It can't be like a walk in the park. I'm, I'm, I'm just sucking at that. It got to be really something threatening. You seem like you're really comfortable with yourself now, especially more than you were when you were younger. Uh, how, how does that I don't happen? know about that. I don't know if anybody's ever comfortable with themselves. They have real, with, totally real with themselves, you yeah. know? Because that's our job in life, to overcome what we hate about ourselves, the spots about ourselves. We all have that. We got to start. That's how Jimmy is overcoming on the level we inspire. Me? I'll be able to read people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to move, okay? <laughs> oh, I have to do that. Yeah. I just need to hear, oh no, run, oh a lot. Oh no, I won't hear that. Yeah. I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> I gotta get some money out of this guy. Let's get this company, let's get that. Let's use him to get that. Do you find yourself turning down more and more stuff since you've gotten into acting now? I mean, I see a lot of things. I imagine you're pretty busy with this. I don't want to turn down something. I like, um, it's like uh, working. Working, working free, it's like working. That's the big working. I know that a lot of boxers haven't had the same success you have. Sometimes pro athletes end up getting out of their uh, what they were most known for and, and kind of decline. But you've managed to keep them better and more uh, excellent in anything you do. It just comes from um, having a great support system. It has nothing to do with me. Um, if I have the aptitude to be able to do something with a lot of great support systems, there's nothing. You talked about not being comfortable anymore. Do you look back and think, I wish I could do that over and over again? No, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where it takes me. And I'm always cautious. Um, I'm always um, cautious about some of my, um, I don't know what you call it. Yes, uh, um, something that um, something I should be grateful for. I don't know. I, I look at everything as it is. You know? I, something um, I've been hit a lot of uh, this in the stock market, and that just leads me down the road to some really disaster situation. I just look at everything for what it pretty much is. So, uh, going through your winter, what if you had a dream project? What would it be? Yeah, just jump in any kind of movie or TV show you like. What else can you catch your face? I don't know. I think it's a little more. It's a record to do. It's a documentary on Chance. It was a documentary about the lifestyle of three day successful champions that come from really crime and. Um, it's crime as well as the affected area. It's really the yeah. bottom of the line in America is going to make sense as far as any city concerned. And um, my personal opinion, it's my personal opinion. Everyone has one. I saw the film, I saw three, three people that, that had great potential. And, um, the shame of where they were, the desire to get out of the rut that they were in, making them extremely successful, all three of them.
Have you seen a dog fight? The documentary is about a backyard fighting in Florida. Yeah. We are in Florida. Yeah. I just see it's a documentary. It's all over the country. They have um, organizations like that all over the country. Underground organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what's what's uh what's the uh, 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 scary? Uh, no, no, it was fine. Oh, so what's uh, scarier, a heavyweight fight or coming here with the hundred thousand geeks, freaking weirdos? Neither one. Really? Same thing. Thank you. Just with all the deep work. Yeah, I try not to um, stay there. I try not to get my my own self and grand and involved with this stuff. That's when I always fuck up. I fuck up when I'm old, when I'm in my selfish mode. It never fails. Never fails. Never fails. When I'm always thinking about how I'm going to get stimulated from a situation, but whatever it takes to get there, I'm going, oh, I'm going, damn. It just never fails. Never fails. That's when my cookie night is selfish. It never fails. How do you feel about the sport of boxing? Huh? They think she's amazing, awesome, great for um, contact sport. Really good for contact sport. Well, women, uh, women are envious men. So that's why they, that's why they do, a good, that's why they do a good job of uh, superseding us in certain fields. <laughs> so you want to? Um, how do I say that? You want the respect that men receive. Even when they seem they don't, even when they appear they don't deserve it. That's what women want. How do you feel about how the sport of boxing is now compared to the viewer? That there's not much of a heavyweight division. It's all like, all the talk about. I was about giving the people what they want when I was fighting. It falls on who you are. It might be the Queen of England. It might be the President. It might be the Secretary of State. They have a really a dignified position in life and instead. But when you come to a fight, I know what you want. You want to see this man um, comatose. You want to see him hurt. I don't care what kind of title you got, how dignified it is become, that I'm a status. You want to see somebody get knocked senseless. You want them to move. And that's what I try to give them. You don't want to live a better you on that. I tried. I tried. I tried. It was amazing. We at our gym, we always pull here. You just got to play the ball and get punched in the face. That's just in life. You know, we just got to have a plan B. In <laughs> life. In life, we have plan B, C. It may not be as um, lucrative as plan A, but we still have a life. We still live. Um, you're saying you're going to get into behind the scenes. Have you ever, when you're doing this, like, slave sessions, like, 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 <laughs> and the pigeon and the pigeon be trying to get the cat. And you know how the, the cat sometimes you look at their prey when they can't get them, they're too high, so energy. And he should dump on the cat sometimes. <laughs> so did you try to dump or something? That's what pigeons do. I used to do every episode to bust my bill. Am I the story that appeals to you more than others? Yeah, I was a, um, a serial, astronaut killer, reluctant, reluctant serial killer for astronauts. One more question. Is there anything else that you're excited to see or do here in Colorado? Hey, listen, um, you're here, I'm going to take everything and I'm going to leave it to <laughs> There's so much to do. <laughs> you get too caught up and you play the dream. You get too caught up and you play the dream.